Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Colin, MM0 OPX and uh, this video I'm going to be looking at the phase vertical setup I've been working on for 40 meters. So if you've seen the um, my last video, you can see that I had some issues. Um, about, I wasn't quite sure, uh, it was kind of blown my mind what, what was actually going wrong. I knew it wasn't um, to do with the phasing, but it was to do with the antennas themselves. Um, I believe I've got to the bottom of that problem. So I think that linear loading will work in perfect um, uh, phasing, um, but I'm going to leave that for another video. Um, I think that video deserves its own little bit of time to explain my findings and what I found was actually wrong um, uh, when I was using the uh, the 5 meter poles, um, linear loading the wires. Uh, so, um, as I say, it's last time I kind of lucked out on the weather, it's kind of the opposite today. It's a, it's a, as we say in Scotland, it's blowing a hilly. Um, it's kind of blowing through rain and there's some quite high gusts. Um, so antenna wise, we're, we're actually using the big boys today. We're using the two spider beam poles, 12 meter spider beam poles. And I actually only have these guide at the bottom. And I, and I did this as much as to give them a, you know, a proper test because they have a bit of loading at the top with the uh, top spider plate and the arms. Um, so I thought, no, I'm going to give them a, a good run for their money. And uh, if I was going to if I was going to run them for a number of hours or overnight or you know longer term, I would certainly guide them with the uh, uh, guy belts that you get and the spider beam guy belts that are guide about the seventh section. Um, so before we go out, I can say that we we've got everything matched in. Um, the two antennas um, matched in perfectly to 7.15. Uh, megahertz and connecting up the phasing uh, network you know the match was still still very very good so i have it hooked up to the 705 here uh, and we'll see if we can work a few contacts uh, in a little bit it's currently 10 to 10 local time and um, so let's go and have a little look at the setup so as you can see as I said, the big boys are out in play today. This is the spider beam 12 meter poles, minus the top section, so it's really 11 meters in total height. And the reason I just need 11 meters is because that's all the height I need with this, with the, this antenna system. So each antenna is identical, eh, almost. So both um, both are fitted with the adjusted wave essential antenna. Um, radio wise, this equates to 19.2 quarter wave radials. So I think there's 192 meters of wire here, and they're in bunches of six. So both antennas are, have, have the same. Now the difference I've made this time, because I had some comments regarding crossing of radials, um, so I'm not doing that this time. I've kept a little bit of separation in between them. So we'll just have a little bit of look at this as well. Uh, and so the control box in the middle. Now I will go into detail with the phasing network. Um, again, that deserves a video on its own. I'll open up this box. I'll show you the circuit. Um, I'll put a multimeter on it. I'll show you the switching and so on. So this this setup is only switching in fire. So you can see D1 and D2. D2 is on on the um, on the right. So whatever antenna you switch to, you connect to D2 delay like delay two, and um, that's the direction that the gain is going in when um, the relay is not engaged. Um, so that's how I remember it. So currently we have this, we've got it set up kind of um, almost northeast southwest, which is probably not ideal for the time of day. Um, but I'll probably come back here uh, at night and we'll see if we can, uh, we can work some stateside with it. So again, uh, the phasing lines, these are 157 degree phasing lines, um, two of those. And the delay line, which is kind of muddled up here, it's very short. It's a 39 degree phase line. And the coax going back um, to the rig. This is um, this is Messi and Poloni Ultraflex 7, fantastic coax. Um, and I should say the coax for that I've used for the phasing network is the um, uh, Super Mini 8. I um, can't remember the exact name of it, but it's the stuff that we buy from Nevada here in the UK. It's quite good coax. Um, Obviously, you wouldn't want to use it in the higher frequencies, um, but it's got pretty much the loss, or just slightly more loss than, than 213, but it, it, it's very good value, and when you're working these lower bands, I don't think the losses are worth talking about here. And as you can see, look at the gales that we're kind of 
experiencing today and we're only guarding at the bottom so I think that's testament um, to the spider beam poles and it's just the gang setup that I have you can see that a guy with a, a jubilee clip hose clamp and um, there's nitrile rubber in between the hose clamp and the pole to provide a gap and well you can see the rest this this uh, this rope here is mass strand P 4 millimeters, which is almost overkill but it's fantastic rope um, and these these make life so much easier these are clam cleat clam cleats they call them and they make it super easy to adjust um, tension on the antenna and these have a silly rating absolute silly rating so um, I've no worry about these um, these breaking ok let's go and have a look um, back at the rig end so this is this is the setup that we're running here um, it's pretty simple I really absolutely adore this 705. I can't I can't tell you how much I love this 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 radio. It's it's first class and the size of it is just incredible. Um, you know it's just truly kind of base station performance, um, but for portable use. Okay, I'm sure it's not as good as a, a 7610 or some of your bigger rigs, um, but you're not going to get that kind of technology into this size certainly at this time. Um, the battery here it's not to power the radio. This is actually to switch the relay. Um, uh, the single pole double throw really on the phasing system there so I'm very lazy so so I just uh, disconnect it so that's it that's it pointing kind of southwestish and then northeast when I connect it up um, but I, I need to get a, a switching a switching device in for this and, and, and do it properly but it was all about kind of just getting it hooked up and getting it running the radios set on 10 watts um, it's actually running off my leisure battery. I'm not sure if I can get down and see that there. Yep. So in that black box, um, that's a um, 100 amp hour, 110 amp hour um, NCC Class B leisure battery. Uh, and there's a connection for that into this little power pole distribution unit here. I um, can't remember the brand, but it's the, it's the popular one anyway. Um, so you can see the input in there, there's a 40 amp input on the left and you can see the 705 power cable um, second from the left there. So that's our, that's our power uh, the radio um, and there's a number of other power sockets. So again it's probably not the ideal time of day because um, it's mostly Europe, there's not a lot of DX, there's a lot, not a lot of uh, stations in the, the path of the antenna shall we say for, for end fire. Um, um, but that doesn't really matter. The purpose of today was to kind of final test, I would say, the antennas. Uh, really just to make sure that it was going to get a match. Uh, and we've, we've done that. And if we just take a look at these antennas. <laughs> and again, they're only guide at the bottom. <laughs> so again, I wouldn't recommend this, especially if you're a small garden and you've got a chance of falling over. I would always say... Um, uh, secondary guide them up with the guy belt so certainly do that the next time so we'll hang about here a little while uh, and we'll see if we can maybe work a station or two so this sounds like a French station here so he sees about an S9 peaking S9 and you see when I connect the delay wow look at the signal difference and you see it pops up there wow Excited and angry and full of angst. You know, this is the world we've got. And you know, you go up on the mountain, you sit there and you stare out, and it's another it's world. Yeah. To me, it's the real world, not this artificial world see, that we create. Sort of five, nine. Simple living. I am so thankful, and I say this perhaps with a certain. Can it get opposite direction? You see, it dropping a couple of S points anyway. There you go. Good difference there. Yeah. With little, like you. And I'm sorry about your concerns about the modern world, but I think I know exactly what you're talking about. Also, uh, quite interestingly, we have a similar situation there you go. in this house. I'd say there was a good solid so couple of S points anyway in that. Maybe a bit more. So I'm going to wrap things up here uh, with this video. Um, so I'm I'm really really happy with with the testing today. So both antennas tuned in um, the matching network seems to work 
Um, it's certainly not affecting the match. SWR is good. I know that's not everything, but it seems to be good. Um, we are getting some front to back. Um, again, not a whole lot of stations to test it on. Um, but I think I've got a French station. Um, uh, and I've got a station in, um, in Switzerland. And there was some front to back. And there's a few others that I didn't catch on video. But there is a couple there on the video for you to see. So there is a few um, S points difference. Um, the band is quite busy. There's a lot of uh, Enter G. So I'm not desperate to make um, a lot of QSOs. I made one QSO, QSO um, with the G6 station there uh, earlier on. Um, but no, so all the, all's good. Um, so I've almost got the confidence, I think, to start making, I think, you know, to start making phasing lines for 80 metres, because I think that would be incredible. Um, in this location, I could probably stretch um, to 10 metre spacing between the antennas, and then that would allow me to get an eighth wave on 80 meters obviously a linear load in the antennas but i don't think that's going to be a problem but i'll explain that in another video uh, why not um so really really positive and uh, 20 meters as well i think that's worth worth looking at there because that's only two and a half meters spacing you know you could do that you know if i go down i perhaps could even do that down at my um um saltwater spot and there's a little um grassy knoll and i think i could probably get that and it sits I could set it up east-west and that would be a fantastic for work in the states so um thanks for watching um and um, thanks for persevering with me and um, if you like my videos then please hit that subscribe button and the notification button it really gives me the the confidence as it does all the U other youtube creators to create to create more content i've seen my uh, subscriber base um, rise um recently so you know thank you to all that's um uh, subscribed and you know if you're just watching the video, no, um, uh, much appreciated. And if uh, you know you want to make a comment, good or bad, you want to give me the thumbs up, give me the thumbs down. That's fine. Um, you know, do do that below. So until the next video, uh, it's uh, seventy three for now. Bye bye.